Para Monica Kainkos, members of the Beri family, His Excellency Dr. Nangolo Mbumba, President of the Republic of Namibia, Madam Sashi, Honorable Ministers, invited guests, allow me to stand by the protocol established. Today we gather as a nation in mourning to pay respects and commemorate the life of the late President, His Excellency Dr. Hage Godfrey Kaingop, a leader whose vision transcended borders and inspired us all. It is with heavy hearts that we bid farewell to a President who dedicated his life to the service of the people a true statesman, a unifying force for our beloved nation. We face a moment of uncertainty, and the only certainty is that things will be different. In the passing of our esteemed leader, we reflect on the loss of a visionary who aimed to unify our nation, to bridge the gaps that divide us, and create a Namibian house where all could find a sense of belonging. As I pen these words on behalf of myself, my wife, the staff, management, and board of the Bank of Namibia, I find myself grappling with the enormity of the emotions steered by the President's remarkable life. Today I wish to express my admiration for the profound impact he had on our beloved nation. In the vast theater of life, where leaders come and go, there emerges once in a generation a man who transcends the ordinary and becomes the figure truly larger than life, a beacon of hope for generations unborn. Today we pay tribute to Hage Godfrey Kengo, the son of a farm worker, a family man, a Christian, a luminary, a political scientist, whose impact on our hearts and our history is immeasurable. From his parents, he inherited not wealth, nor privilege, but a steadfast determination and an unwavering belief in the power of education to transcend barriers. With a heart as vast as the Namibian plains and a spirit as resilient as a desert winds, dearest Hage, to describe you as a statesman is to fall short of capturing the enormity of the presence as you have given your life to Namibia and lead us with strength confidence and wisdom. Your larger-than-life personality was not rooted in grandiosity, but in the profound authenticity with which you led. You were a manifestation of the noblest quality humanity aspires to embody. In his words, we find not only inspiration but a guiding light to lead us towards a brighter tomorrow. As he says it, and I love to quote this, my love for this country is what drove me into exile. It is what keeps me awake at night, agonizing about challenges. It is what drives me during the day, finding solutions to these challenges. I represent the sum total of our collective hopes and our collective fears. I see the threats and I savior the opportunities. From the outset, his commitment to inclusivity, equality, and unity has woven a tapestry of progress that resonates across the Namibian landscapes. National unity is an incremental prerequisite, he declared. In his mind, it was not a luxury, it was oxygen. Without unity, our nationhood crumbled, a sun castle washed away by tides of discord. 
Social cohesion, the motor binding us, was our shared heartbeat under Hage's leadership. And from his cohesion flowed rivers of possibility of economic prosperity, wealth, and dreams realized. He quoted Kwame Krumah in saying that, and I quote that, what you quote when you quoted Kwame Krumah, the forces that unite us are intrinsic and greater than the superimposed influences that keep us apart. The key to our victory in the way in the war against poverty is unity, pride in our country and our house. Let us exude the spirit of the new Namibia, a spirit of peace, integrity, sacrifice, strength, passion, patriotism, togetherness, and bravery. We must pull together in the same direction. We are all sons and daughters of the soil. This land and the precious blood shed for it is what makes us Namibian, not the color of our skin, or the languages we speak. No one should be made to feel guilty or inadequate because he or she is black, old or young, from a minority group or a majority group or living with a disability. We are one Namibia, we are one nation. Ethnic and tribal strains were ingrained into our nation's psyche, he cautioned. The abyss of intolerance drawn before us, a precipice he begged, we must not revisit. We heard him say, let me assure you as fellow Namibians, our problems will never exceed our immense potential. This made us feel a surge of optimism, a reminder that even in the face of adversity that lies within us, the power to overcome to persevere and to energize is for us. His words were not mere platitudes, but a call to action, a rallying cry for every Namibian to rise above challenges and strive for greatness. Overcome the limitations, he commanded. Cain Cobb's voice resonated, a cosmic echo, poverty, inequality, indignity. There were black holes threatening our orbit. But unity, our gravitational force, held us steady. We clap hands, tribes, tongues, dreams entwined. Together, we defied gravity. Persevere in the face of adversity, he urged us. Cain Cobb's stride was measured it was deliberate. He knew that patriotism was not a flag waved in fair weather. It was a sweat or on bros, the colors hands lifting others. Yes, it is precisely in the face of adversity that true leadership shines brightest. In the resilience to persevere, the courage to confront difficult truths, and the humility to learn from mistakes. In his own way, he wore the weight of leadership with grace, despite criticism that bordered on contempt, the abuses he needed to suffer. He served us despite all those. Leaders must have courage to envision a better future and pursue innovative solutions, even in the face of uncertainty and skepticism and abuse. As we bid farewell, let us release him, a shooting star. His legacy etched in cosmic dust whispers, dream Namibia, dream Namibia, dream boldly. And so we look up, our eyes, telescopes, our hearts, constellations. Hage Kengop, you are now a stardust, a beacon a guide for our dreamers. We must dream big, he urged us. His words echoed through the sun dunes across savannas. Namibia, a land of vast skies, needed audacity. Cain Cobb's brush 
dubbed in stardust, painting visions of equality, visions of justice and dignity. His palette held use of sunrise, of resilience. Perhaps the most enduring legacy of President Kane Gobb's leadership lies in his unwavering belief in the transformative power of dialogue and consensus building. In a world fraught with division and discord, he stood as a beacon of hope, bridging the gap between the divergent interests and forging a path towards common grounds. Nations go to war when dialogue fails. That is what he said. In our democracy, we have sufficient room for frank and open dialogue, he advised. There is no reason for us to compromise our hard fought in for independence by fighting one another over issues that can be resolved by constructive dialogue. I would like to re-emphasize that peace and stability are the conditia sine qua non for development and progress. For this reason, we must continue to place the highest premium on maintaining a strong social fabric where all our people live in harmony. In 2022, we had the honor of hosting our late president at the Bank of Namibia. During his visit, he delivered a steering message calling upon us to unite and build the Namibian house together. His Excellency President Kengop emphasized the importance of pulling in the same direction towards a common purpose, and he rallied us to keep the faith in the nation's potential by reminding us that Namibia is the only place we have, only place we call home. Lastly, on that day, he pledged to leave behind the legacy of hope, a legacy of hope and the promise of a brighter future for all Namibians. And indeed, it is very, this very legacy this, that has left us. Today, our economy stands as a testament to his vision poised to make a significant difference in the life of ordinary Namibians. Yes, the monetary policy is in the restrictive space, but we are seeing total disinflation coming through. Our economy grew by more than 7% last year. That is in 2022. 23, we're probably going to have an economy growing around 4%. In 2024, around 35 to 4% growth that we'll see. That's the right building blocks that this country requires. And you know whose leadership it is? We have been brought in by President Kengo. We have been appointed by him. And we made sure we bought in his vision. We need to turn this economy around. And we are at that stage where this economy is going to create jobs. All we need to do is don't lose this momentum. Take this. We've discovered oil and gas. You know, we are passionate about green hydrogen. We've got mineral resources. We are at the very sweet spot. It's for us as a nation to lose. The president that has left us, he has done what he is supposed to do. I was once told that the tragedy of life is not death, but what we left let to die inside of us while we have life. This quote serves as a poignant reminder for us all. Let us live our lives in such a way that when our time comes, people will mourn our loss and celebrate the legacy we leave behind. Our departed leader has left us a legacy of unity, stability, and economic prosperity. Let us honor that legacy through our actions and commitment to serve. As we, as a nation, mourn the loss of our beloved president, let us aspire to uphold this legacy by affecting this vision for a prosperous and united Namibia to the best of our abilities. Let our work be a testament to the principles he stood for, and may our efforts contribute to the continued prosperity of our nation. The president was sick, and two weeks ago, we needed to appoint the board members for the Bank of Namibia. Do you know, on his sick bed, 
he realized what this nation requires. We sent that letter, we spoke, and he signed the appointment letters for the board members. That is noble. Someone who is not in office but realizes what this country and this nation needs. He signed those appointment letters for the board members, the board members were appointed. As we bid farewell to a man larger than life, we do not mourn the loss of a leader. We celebrate the gift of having witnessed a rare, rare brilliance that illuminated our collective journey. As Namibians, your legacy is not confined to the years you spent in the limelight, but to the dedication of your whole life to the country and her people. The spirit woven into our DNA whispers, hold hands, pull together. His laughter echoes across parliamentary halls, a melody of hope. On the global stage with his lovely wife, Monica, they stand as a radiant duo, illuminating as ambassadors. I, see the, I saw them performing in Davos the World Economic Forum in Switzerland. I saw them performing in Washington, D.C. Uh, these two people, what they have done for this country is immeasurable. They've interacted with world leaders in a way that we can only be proud of. They have done what they are supposed to do for this country. We need to recognize what they have done for this country. Monica, I want, we are sending strength to you. May the good Lord comfort you and the family. Go well, my president, until we meet again. I thank you. <laughs>